All right, what's cracking, fans? Everybody out there in the knives. Knife talk today. Updated a collection, all right? So you'll see some that changed and some that still remained. And uh, to be honest with you, I don't remember which ones are gone. I'd have to look back at my old videos. But before we start talking about these ones right here, I want to show you the ones that I didn't want to take down because I don't like trying to put them back where they need to be. So... Got this bad boy right here. I bought all these Spartan figures. So we've got Hector that's holding the Miller Brothers TF1. We've got a Chili's that's holding that bad Bietz from Crusader Forge. That's right, I think it's tight. And then of course, we got Leonidas over here holding the Praetorian tie, all right? So I've got those in my collection right there. I just didn't want to take them down. I'm trying to avoid showing you all my mess here. So I'm gonna walk over here now. And I'll show you what else I got. So obviously I can't pull that out of this play case. Got the Microtech Combat Trodon to go along with Boba Fett. Up here we got the Daryl Ralph Expendables knife. That is the 2021 version. The last knives, one of the last knives that he actually made before he passed. Got the Hulk holding my real brass knuckles with the AK-47. And then we got Rambo up here. So I actually bought the 1.6 series toy to go along with it. Put him in there with the sign knife. All right. Let's go talk about what we need to talk about here. Got boxes all over the damn place. I didn't realize my collection was still this big. So I guess we'll start out with the Bally Song since I, you know, acquired a new one recently. We'll start over here with the Chironi Blades or Chironi Knives. This thing, I literally forgot. I had it in my collection until I really dug into my drawer right now. And I don't know how I forgot about it because this is legitimately my my best ballet song like hands down the motion i mean it's so fluent it's really really well designed and laid out pinless ballet song i really like it maybe some of the other people out there don't but yeah are they high priced sure but damn what a freaking knife and we'll move on to the bench all right this and all my knives stay in damn mint condition you know, I don't even, my wife don't even know why I keep them half the time. She's like, well, you don't even touch them. I don't know what the hell I do sometimes either. But I enjoy looking at them. Pull them out and showing them to people. So that's my enjoyment, all right? And I like collecting them. Very, very nice bench made right here. Then we got the Hom Design. This one is the I Basilisk, I believe. Channel Construction. Latchless. Awesome. Very, another very nice knife. These home designs are very good, too. Um, all my butterfly knives are good. You know, I don't want to buy a piece of shit. So I make sure I not, not so much do my research, but I know who the makers are and what their reputation has been over the years. And that's what I choose to pull the trigger to make some of these purchases. And there's one that I didn't know about, but I'm going to go ahead and let you know when I get there. So another Basilisk or Elite. This one I did take out the, see I got the weights in there. Yeah, I really like it better without the latch and without the other spacers. Those are spacers that were designed and made by Hom, so they are perfect for that knife. Here we got the Flytanium. Another another really good knife. Now, I had one problem with their other one. You guys can watch my other video on the French fry knife. And they became dicks about it. So, I'm not going to stir up that story again. But this one is very well made and balanced. Nice thick titanium. You know, I'm a channel construction guy. But I tell you what, that sandwich right there is pretty damn nice. So, I do like it. Get over here to the 29 knives. Got a chisel tanto. It's not chisel ground. It's just called the chisel. Let's see. Got a little bit of scratches on that. Man, these 29 knives are definitely made to scratch. All right. 
This one I really flip around quite a bit. I like it. I like the size, five inch blade. It's just a badass freaking all around knife, nice and heavy. This one I don't flip as much. I think it's too damn pretty to flip. I've opened it and closed it a couple times, flipping it, but you can see that there's hardly any scratch on that. Another, another latchless design, another five inch blade. So I really, really do like 29 knives just for what you get out of it. Another one here, this one I got from Dave at the Hollow Grind. I flipped this one around quite a bit. I think it's a pretty cool looking blade. These are all S30V, by the way, from 29 Knives. Got the other two from PVK, but this one was from David the Hollow Grind. He, he just happened to have one one day when I was looking for one, and I was like, oh shit, hook it up. So as you can see, it's a lot smaller. It's got about a four, four and a quarter inch blade on that one. Then we got the Microtech Metal Mark. I really always like this design. Maybe some say it's not the best flipper, but ergonomically, if you were to have a knife, a belly song that you can use and be very comfortable doing it, this thing is comfortable in any way you hold it. I think it was an outstanding design. It needs to come back. I really, really like that blade. Channel Titanium, another one. All right, now to the big bastard of them all. This is my most frequent, frequent acquisition. All right, as you can see, flame treated. This is made by Steve Ryan. I've always wanted one of his knives, but I've never actually handled one. So I was, I was really hesitant. I wanted a belly song from him in the past, but there's really no videos on anybody flipping them or doing anything with these things. So every time you see them pop up, they sell right away. And then you don't see them for a long time. So this time it popped up on monkeyedge.com. I like the Tonto profile much more than the beak, you know, the, the karambit style tip. This thing just was appealing to me. I got it at first. I didn't like it because it's so freaking huge. I mean, look at this. It's like carrying around a massive fixed blade. But it grew on to me. And as I flipped it, wow. I was like, yeah, I'm keeping it. I was actually planning on sending it back to him. but And already had a couple other knives picked out. But you know what? I kept it because it is very well made. It's a nice knife. 9.3 ounces, just like these guys here. But I really like it. Matter of fact, I've been flipping that one all this week since I got it. All right, going to the fixed blades. We've got the Medford Sniper. This is in D2 steel, Vulcan finish. Very nice, comfortable knife. I carry this one quite a bit. That's the one that I keep in my... And I carry it inside the waistband, too, so... Not so much for self-defense, but it's a great fixed blade all around to carry. This bad boy right here from Strider, quarter-inch thick S30V, VB. It's got the serrations on it and a Tonto blade. Definitely stabbed this thing through some car hoods. <laughs> then we got the Microtech Borka Blades dagger. This thing is the best dagger made. I mean, the V14 is probably better, but size-wise is what I'm talking about. Actual for, for concealed carry. You got a nice, very nice wide profile blade, double edge, and it's a shorty. So it's easy to, easy to store away and not get in your way. All right, we got the Blade Show 2023 acquisition here. This one I actually picked up from Ass Kicker Blades at the Blade Show. I like that drag, dragon on it. It is S45VN Vulcan finish. Very, very nice knife. You guys know about the Nosferatu. I will never give that up. This is by far my favorite. Is I don't carry it so much, but if I was to carry it, this would be the one I really, really go to for size-wise. It just feels so, so nice. It's sleek. The design is great. The action on it is really good. You can actually close it one-handed, no problem. But very, very nice knife. If you made that in a manual action with that blade on it, I would also buy another one. We've got the TFF1H, I believe this one's called, because it's the thinner, thinner profile. Another Medford knife and tool. And I really like this. As you can see, I don't wash this one as much. I carry it quite a bit. I really like that one. 
For the last couple months, though, I've been carrying this one, the USMC Fighting Folder. I actually, I don't know if you guys see my other video, but as you can see, I took the blue off. Kind of just dragged some paper across it, left the markings all in it because it actually matches the handle and the blade somewhat. All right, I carry this one. This is my carry all the time now because I rounded off all the edges with sandpaper. I mean, it took me a while, but man it really feels good in my hand right now so i've been carrying this one every freaking day very very nice knife there cold steel espada if you're a collector you gotta have one of these the only thing i don't like about this is the aluminum scratches up so damn easy you know they should have came up with something a little bit better to polish out you know s35 vn model now, one thing I'm waiting on is their freaking butterfly knife, the Archangel coming back. You know, I look at Blade HQ's website, and it says it's got uh, vanadium, chrome vanadium steel, which is shit that Case Knives use, is using right now. I don't want that shit. When I look at the videos on YouTube, it says they're using S35VN, so I asked Blade HQ. I sent them an email saying, hey, what's the deal? You know, did you guys misprint it or what? You know, because if it's got S35VN, I'd put my freaking money in on a $140 knife with that. Because I've always wanted an Archangel anyway. But I got to wait for that response. And hopefully they don't sell out of the damn thing before I get it. Anyway, that's in the future. <laughs> if you're a collector and you don't have one of these, yeah, I'm sorry. But uh, damn, these are pricey, so understandable. <laughs> uh, the resale on these things is ridiculous. Is it worth it? Yeah, if you put this side by side with a Marfion for the same price range. Yeah, I would. I would take this over a Marfion, to be honest with you. This was a purchase from the 2023 Blade Show as well. Yeah, I might as well fire that once, huh? I'll show you. Very smooth, very nice, solid lockup. And you gotta have a stitch. Automatic, I don't really like the new ones that they made. Um, really don't. With the, hell, ram lock, I guess they call it. Not a big fan of that. Maybe if they made it with aluminum handles and stuff, I'd probably be more of a fan, but I don't like G10 too much. Heritech. This is the Cleric 2. Very, very awesome knife. Definitely a great replacement for all the people that like the Makora 2, the original Makora 2 from Microtech that was that size. That is much better if you ask me. I can't fire this one because I'm one-handed with the camera right now, but... Blade, Blade Show Special, I believe. This was also at the 2023 show. I like this knife a whole lot. It's just got a great profile and it's got a great size and the firing mechanism is unfrickin' real. So definitely recommend one of those rather than you guys out there spending fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars on a frickin' Halo 6. The Halo 6 is a badass knife, but... Uh, I've looked at them several times on Arizona Custom Knives, and I will not force myself to pay that much on a knife that I've, I've actually owned four or five of those in the past. Am I pissed at myself for coughing them up and getting rid of them? Phew, hell yeah. Seeing some of the prices on the Custom I had, I'm like, ooh, what was I thinking? But hopefully Microtech will come out with another Halo series at some point, and I'll get my hands on, on one at that point and just kind of save it for later. Don't get rid of it this time. This is one that I got from Smoky Mountain Knife Works. Really like this knife. The pattern, I mean, it is just, this thing's awesome. Probably the best OTF knife I got as far as something that I would actually carry and use if need be. It's nice and solid. The lockup is solid on it, but not as solid as a deadlock, obviously. But you got to actually pull on that blade to get it to move a little bit, is what I'm saying. As you can see, I like the combat troll now. I mean, there we got it with the Hellhound Tonto blade. Another very good one. And then I get this bad boy up here. RMJ Tactical. Ooh, almost ripped my freaking bed. My wife would have been pissed. <laughs> Eagle Tailing. So I've had this for a while. Never used it. But, man, I really do enjoy taking a look at it once in a while. Decided to take it out of the box today, so there it is. 
Very, very comfortable, very heavy. All right, everybody, well, if you got any questions on any of these knives, feel free to ask. And for your future reference, if you find one of those, check it out. Let me know what you think, because I really like that freaking knife. This thing is, wow, outstanding. I didn't even know Steve Ryan made such a good ballet song, so. Oh, forgot about that. The Medford Knife and Tool. Crown of Thorn. <laughs> yeah, this thing's bitching. A little big for my fingers, but I bought it just because I like it. You know? It's pretty cool. Don't even carry this damn thing, but it's pretty cool to have. And I'll throw one of these in there. So I got these from Flytanium. I actually went on their website and bought it. I believe it was a four-pack of them. And yes, they do fit on a majority of these ballet songs. And I use this gray one on this one right here just because it matches it really nicely but anyway if you got those if you see those on the website you can pick them up they work very well all right especially if you're carrying a latchless belly song in your pocket all right everybody hope you enjoy peace out